timing tensioner, get the chain tensioner on there. Timing tensioner. I guess it's kind of a timing tensioner. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we got our chain tensioner. Make sure that the spring and the cap is off it. And you just press in on the side right here, theoretically, and push that all the way in. Grab your gasket and your two eight millimeter bolts and put it on. Bam, it's on there. Uh, now take your cap and your spring, pop it on there, push it down, and you'll hear it click to put tension on that chain. Chain tensioner done. And I forgot to mention, since we're working in the living room again today, we have our friend's MR Original Concept Garage, or Mr. Original Concept Garage. Brandon, what is it? Uh, look up MR Original Concept Garage on Facebook and YouTube. These guys are awesome. Let's get back to this. Well, let's go ahead and get our studs in for our carburetor. Just a dab of red Loctite. I don't usually put much on. Seated in there, doubled up nut, and get the other one done. And there you go. Manifold studs in. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and do the do the same on the bottom for the exhaust studs. And uh, I'm not really gonna show you. It's just the exact same thing. Pro tip, I should have done it. Um, install these before installing your head. Makes life easier. Mostly. All right, I'll show you. Exhaust studs. All right, I'm going to get this dirty ass old stator put back in. Uh, two bolts there, two bolts there. Dirty old stator in. She works. Uh, what next? I guess, uh, I guess we could put the, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's do the spark plug. Next. With my spark plug, I am running a temp sensor. So we gotta slide that on there. Go ahead and put that in. I just got to say, this is satisfying. You hear that? <laughs> I don't always use a torque wrench for, uh, for my spark plugs, but man, come on. How can you not like that? <laughs> anyway, plugs in. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get this bell on there. A little bit dirty, huh? Oh, well. Whoa. Mm. 
<clears throat> Just sucked right on there, didn't it? Well, let's make sure that we get it over the key. Let's look and line her up. There we go. You can feel it slide over. And I'm going to hit that with the impact real quick. Uh-oh, we said no impact. Well, I'm using an impact for that. Um, we can now verify my timing. I know it's correct, but uh, we can verify it with the marks on there. I'm going to go ahead and get this fan on. All right, fan on. Just to show you, my timing is dead nuts. I don't know if you can see that mark or not. Well, it does kind of zoom in and out on it. You can see it for a second. And then over here, should be able to see doesn't get much better than that I'm not gonna bore you with the whole thing but I'm gonna go ahead and get these cooling shrouds put on and then we'll decide what to do next bada bing bada boom what's wrong with that dig it um what should we do next what's the crowd demand crowd hmm nothing i got no crowd shit uh yeah no crowd um all right well let's put the carb on real quick while i got the valve cover off I was in an argument with a guy. I don't remember what group it was or what his name was. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to call him out. Um, that kept telling me that he was not going to do the valve adjustment himself because he didn't want to take the cooling shroud off. And I told him, all you have to do is take the valve cover off. And he was insistent on the fact that no you can't take the valve cover off without taking the cooling shroud off uh maybe there's some cooling shrouds that are that way but i've never seen one um they're designed so that you can clearly do a valve adjustment um he didn't want to damage things by taking apart the cooling cover i i don't know i don't know i don't know but uh yeah clearly on this one anyway and I've done a lot of them. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get that carburetor on there. Just get it, get these nuts tight. You don't need to be strong man on it. You're gonna either break the stud or crack the riser or, or whatever. They just need to be tight. All right, carb is on. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. It's no uh, ten thousand dollar monster racing super duper engine. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, just an inexpensive QMB, but uh, it'll look better than it did before. Well. I guess the logical order of things says it's time to get the wheel and that uh, a cheap Chinese muffler on there so that uh, so we can take it for a ride. Yeah, <laughs> takes a little bit more than that. I got to do more than just put the wheel and the, the muffler on. But uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, while we're at this point, I wanted to show you something. Um, these gaskets are awesome 
um, use these, <laughs> you won't get leaks. But I wanted to show you something else. They always come with a donut also. Um, and I've actually even seen, uh, I guess, instructions or, or graphics that show installing the donut and this big flange gasket. Um, I'm here to tell you I've done it both ways. I tried it with the donut um, and I got exhaust leaks doing it that way. Um, maybe I did something wrong. I don't know, but uh, I have run with just this flat gasket many, 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 many times and very rarely have I gotten an exhaust leak at the uh, at, at the motor um, so my suggestion is don't use those together um, you can use this by itself uh, that's how they come from the factory and I've done it a bunch of times but uh, I prefer to run this one that's all I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the wheel and the muffler on there and come back and show it to you and then we're gonna wrap this up there you have it, getting more rideable by the second. Um, if you like that, contact my boy Hunter. You can find him on Michigan Scooter Geeks on Facebook. Um, he makes those. I think they're pretty cool. Let's get that exhaust on there. All right, I'm ready to put this on the bike. Roll out the blue carpet. Yee yee.